Hi, welcome again to Face to Face. I'm talking now to Wahida Parker, who's Chief Executive of Equilaw, and the subject is media, mediation, dispute resolution. Been in the news for a long time, but a new push now recently to try and get it part of uh, dispute resolution, particularly for companies. Hi, Wahida. Hi, good evening. Uh, Mervyn King had a breakfast this morning, the corporate governance guru, and King 3 coming up. Uh, as I say, we've had dispute resolution around for a long time, and it's an obvious alternative to expensive court cases. Now it looks like this kind of process is going to be part of uh, a fiduciary duty of a director. So all sorts of other imperatives come in. Very true. Uh, I think it's absolutely accurate to say that it's been around for a long time. There is a new focus on it, however, especially because our court roles are so clogged up. There's exceptional delays from the moment of the dispute until it's actually resolved, and that puts an emphasis on, on trying to find a way in which to alleviate the pressure on the courts. Mediation is, of course, one of those ways to alleviate the, uh, the pressure on the courts. What has happened in the UK, they have had a voluntary system where people can subject themselves to a process of mediation. Other countries have opted for compulsory mediation. There's a strong case to be made out in our country, either or, whether it's voluntary or compulsory, but such a system is definitely necessary. Mm. I remember in the 80s it really became in vogue for the first time in this country, and the reason was also, I think, to deal with some of the difficult issues around apartheid, where uh, there were court cases building up there, and, and workplace things in particular, and alternative dispute resolution was seen as an option. Now you say it shouldn't be seen as an alternative, it should be the first part in a process perhaps. Absolutely. At Equilaw we believe that it's multi-tiered dispute resolution. That's a phrase that was coined by Professor Butler. And what we mean when we say that is it's one step in the process to resolving disputes. If a mediation is not settled, and our statistics show that 80% of matters that are mediated on are settled at the mediation. And those statistics are actually borne out by the UK experience. They have similar statistics. The remaining 20% then has a choice. They can elect either to go to court or to go to arbitration. And that is why we say it's a multi-tiered dispute. If you say alternate, it means it's the other choice, a completely different choice. And we don't agree with that stance. Perhaps the difference between court and arbitration is that both sides in arbitration agree to buy, abide by the decision voluntarily, whereas in court sometimes you're not there voluntarily. It's because you, you have to be there. Now, the cost of it, arbitration also must cost something, surely. There must be a structure and a process and qualified people who have to be paid. Absolutely. Uh, the cost of arbitration has been one of the arguments that those people not in favor of it have used significantly. And it is true, there is a cost associated with arbitration which you would otherwise not have to incur if you went to court. The choice is obviously that of the person involved in the dispute, whether they elect to go for arbitration or to go through the so court process. In a sort of typical case, if you were to go to court or to go to arbitration, one thinks with court, particularly high court with advocates, 15, 20,000 rand each per day. Now, that's not what we're talking about with arbitration. The difference is you'll probably still pay 15, 20,000 rand for your counsel, etc. The added cost is, of course, the cost of the arbitrator, whereas the taxpayer generally pays for the cost of the judge. So it is an additional cost. The argument against it is, of course, the time that you save, mm -hmm. both in terms of productivity, stress, outcome, is that clearly makes up for whatever it is you're spending. The real issue is that it's inclined to be available for people who have money. So you've got to have pretty deep pockets in order to arbitrate. Mediation by its very nature, because it's voluntary and because it's compacted into one day, it's far more cost effective. And then if we alleviate the pressure on the courts in that way, we can clearly get many more matters onto the court rolls and dealt with by the court without incurring their additional expense. Surely the, the companies uh, that have not been using it, they must be made to see the, the value of it. So it may be cost, it may be time, it may be productivity, but you have to incentivize them. I mean, they have to see that it's a much better alternative. 
Unfortunately, mediation has been around for a very long time. The arenas that it operates at in is, for example, in family law. Mm -hmm. Very little credit is given for the amount of work that people have put into mediation in the sphere. So it's not seen as hardcore as litigation, for example. And that may be one of the reasons why people are slightly disinterested in it. However, commercial mediation is really the cutting edge of knowing how to deal with disputes and there's nothing soft or fuzzy about it. And I'm not by implication saying there's anything soft or fuzzy about family law. Mm. I, I just don't think it's been given the recognition it deserves. Well, let's hope it gets more of a push. That is Wahida Parker of Equilaw. Thanks very much. Thank you.